What's going on guys, welcome back to Gabriela Gia Prod. This time I'm going to show you guys how I managed to create a scene like this one, where we have these lava rivers and a pool of lava that is starting to solidify at the end, it's starting to get cold, it's starting to transform into a rock. To complement the whole idea of lava or magma, I thought it would look cool something out of a Mars scenario, for example, with an orange atmosphere, very dusty as well, Anyway, these projects are possible thanks to my patrons. In case you also want to support me, I left the link in the description and you will get access to this project and others as well. So, with that being said, let's see how we can actually do this. So, it's quite a complex shader, but more in terms of parameters, because as you can see, we are going to need quite a few. But at the end, you will understand that the shader itself isn't that hard. We will be using a lot of scrolls and distortions and dissolves as well, techniques. For the meshes, I created this wall scenario, and for the lava, rivers, I created this mesh with a few more edge loops, and some of these are apart from one another. I then used the subdivision surface modifier and a displace modifier as well with a noise texture to create some irregularities. And what we cannot forget is the UV maps, since they are really important to get a really good feeling on the lava. So basically I pressed U to choose light map pack, and then I selected one face, and selected everything with A, and now again with U I choose follow active quads. This way I will have a straight UV map that I only need to align to the center and occupy the whole UV area. Something like this. Once I have done the lava rivers meshes, I went to Unity and started by creating a PBR shader with right click. We can rename it and double click it to open in shader graph. And the first thing we can do is already create two vectors, one for the metallic and for the smoothness properties. Right, now we need two textures. One is for the lava and the other one is for the lava normals. And we can also add a color property for the lava and set it to HDR mode with a white color and full opacity. I'm gonna push it up here above the lava texture, and now let's drop the lava normals and the lava texture up here and connect them to a sample texture 2D. Once I add them here, I connected the normal texture to the normal input and the lava texture to the albedo input. Now talking about textures, we are going to need at least two, and there's this site, textus.com, where we can search for lava, and if you create an account, you will be able to download a 1024 by 1024 texture. I simply download the 8th and the normal textures. We don't need color, because the 8th map is going to act more as a lava noise text. Then I assigned them respectively, and multiply the lava texture with the color, and connect it to the albedo, so really basic stuff. Ok, so the lava rivers are going to move, right? They need motion. So I used the time node and created two multiply nodes, one for the lava normals and the other for the lava text. So I created a vector 2 for the lava speed, which I connected here and then added a tiling and offset node, since it will also be useful to control the scale of the lab, for example. Now, I connected everything like this, and created another vector too for the lava scale, and placed it above the lava speed. Up here we can do the same, create a vector 2 for the lava normal speed, and then I also reused the lava scale for the lava normal styling and offset node, like this. Uh, 
at this point, I saved these and went back to Unity just to test this out. And I created a material from the shader and assigned it to the lava lake. Since it was too big, I increased the tiling to 4x4. I then chose an orange color and increased the intensity too. And made it move slowly since it's a lake and I don't want too much movement. For the rivers it's going to be different. Now the normal speed can be very close to zero, it's starting to solidify basically. That's what the normals represent. So at this point I needed a glow, so I went back to Shader Graph and created a Fresno node. And I also added color in HDR mode to multiply with the Fresno. And this is going to be multiplied with the lava texture. And it's going to connect to the emission. That's right. So in Unity nothing is very noticeable until I start increasing the intensity and play with the Fresnel power. It gives some glow on the opposite side of our lava, basically. Something like this with a bit of glow at the end is enough. Now, in the lake, in the opposite side to where the river is running, I wanted the lava to get cold and to look like it's solidifying and transforming to rock. So in order to achieve that, I needed a ramp which I could get from splitting a UV node and by using the G channel with the power node, I could control the intensity of this gradient. So I created a vector one called bottom power. Now to have even more control over the gradient, I can add a remap node which is going to be controlled by a vector 2 and the minimum input is 0. I can multiply this remap with the lava texture and pass this to the Fresno and replace the connection to the lava color as well. Now if I increase the bottom power, it gets darker, but I will show you in a moment how to better use this. What I noticed now is that I needed to have more control over the white and dark areas of the lava texture. So I also added a remap node next to the texture. And as you can see, this input will have control over the white and the other will have control over the black. I also added a vector 2 called Lava Remap with the default value of 0 and 1. If I increase the Y value, I get more white. As you can see, it gets brighter. And if I decrease the X values, it gets darker. And this has to be well balanced with the bottom power and remap properties too. Something like this for now looks cool even though I will change it probably. But I will show you my values at the end. Now, this is still a little bit too static. We need to add more motion and distortion to this. So in order to obtain that, I used a Voronoi node to distort the main texture. For this Voronoi node, I created a vector 2 called Voronoi Speed. which is going to be multiplied with the time node and then added to the UV node, which we can drag back here and add to the multiply and then connect to the UV input of the Voronoi and that's it, it's moving. Now we can add a few more controls to the Voronoi. For example, we can add a Voronoi scale with a 5 for default value And we can also add another vector 1 to control the Voronoi angle offset, which is going to be multiplied by time. So it can move and create this nice little twist 
in the middle of the Voronoi. Now, in order to distort the main texture, we are going to lerp this between A, the normal UVs, and B, the UVs completely distorted, which is the Voronoi multiplied by the UVs, like this. And for the T value, we are going to create a vector one called Voronoi amount, and this allowed me to control how much I want to distort the main texture, which I have already shown in other tutorials, by the way, on my channel. And this lerp can be connected to the tiling and offset of the lava texture, just like this. I went back to Unity, and as you can see, we have this nice motion. It is too big right now, so I increased the tiling of the Voronoi scale. And it has started to look better. But I also want to dissolve the main text. So basically, I want this to have a really cool motion and distortion. So I used a simple noise, which is basically going to have the same setup, so it can scroll with a tiling offset, multiplied by a vector 2. Like this, I also created a simple noise scale vector 1, to control the scale, and connect it to multiply. And now this simple noise, since it's already moving, we can use a power node to control how much it dissolves the simple noise. I also created a vector 1 to control the simple noise power. And this is going to multiply it with the main text, with the lava text. But we are also going to need again another lerp node, because we don't want to pass our main text completely dissolved. So we can connect the totally dissolved lava text to B and the not dissolved lava texture to A. To control the amount, I also added a simple noise amount vector 1. And this is going to be connected to the T input of the lerp. And the lerp itself is going to be connected to the remap node. OK. Once I saved this and went back to Unity, it was now starting to look more vibrating, with more motion. So since this required a lot of tweaking, I'm going to fast forward and show you my final values for this texture, because every texture will need different values, and I will show you in a moment why. Now I only needed to add this shader to the rivers as well, but I couldn't use the same material I used for the lake, otherwise the river won't scroll, and it won't be correctly scaled, and it wouldn't look that good, as you can see. So I duplicated the lake material and assigned it to the rivers, and this allowed me to change the scale, so it would have a better fit with the rivers, and correct the speed, for example, of the lava as well, and adjust the brightness. And once again, this required a lot of tweaking, so I'm gonna fast forward, but uh, here's my final values, in case you are interested to, to try them. And uh, as you may have noticed, this is looking differently than the one I've shown in the beginning. Because, because the amazing thing with this shader is that by changing only the lava texture, we get a totally different feeling and aspect. As you can see, but each texture requires a new set of adjustments, a new set of values. So even if I now change this material to have another lava texture, I would still need to adjust these values. But overall I think it's a great shader and open to a lot of customization, which is very nice. I also added a twirl node before passing to the lava texture. Because it really adds a nice little twist to the lake. I also then added a few more particle systems to complement the whole idea, basically some smoke and some ashes floating around, and these little bubbles. The bubbles are using the same shader I used in Tornado tutorial, so in case you are interested I left a link in the description. 
It basically uses custom vertex streams to dissolve the sphere and make it seem like it's bursting. I then use this mesh with a particle system that emits in a cone shape every now and then. So that's it guys, this project is available on my Patreon page, links in the description, you will get everything I used here and you will also have access to many more effects and shaders. And I want to thank every patron that supports me, these videos will be a lot harder to make it if I didn't have your support, you guys are amazing. And I want to say a special thank you to the Super Mega Patrons, which are AI Yiteng, Alejandro, ForteHeroGames.com, Goblin Plague, James Finlay, Joshua Yu, Juan Mendiola, Mark Brittingham, Remiel, Tommy, Travis McCallum, Warden Studios, and Yayoni. You guys are amazing. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.